You still have the option to phone a friend. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna phone a friend. Uh, I'm gonna call Voice Over Johnny. He'll know. He'll know. Yo, hello? Voice, my guy, my main man. Listen, big money on the line. Should I A, cut my hair, B, cut the grass, or C, cut off a toxic relationship? Ah, uh, okay, okay. So you need something. Huh? No, because you only call me when you need something. You want me to read this, do that. No, listen. How you know I ain't busy? You don't ever call to check up on me? I shouldn't even have picked up. You don't ever ask me how my family doing. I have a family, Johnny. And how you don't know the answer to this question? I'm just gonna and why ain't there no option for D? Actually, I'm just going to go. See, that's your problem. It's all about you. It's all about what you want to get done. Need, need, need. That's all I ever hear from you. My name is Johnny. This is No Lab Code Required, and this exists because the stuff that makes us healthier should not be confusing, false, or exclusively for people in lab coats. Look, the people around us, the beings that we interact with on a daily, our family, our friends, they have a massive impact on our health. And we could probably recognize the mental side of that, but let's talk about the physiological side. This review article referenced studies that found low quantity or quality of social ties are linked to a whole host of conditions, generally involving vascular health, but even including cancer. So why does this matter? Well, it's no secret that cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the entire world and low quality relationships are proven contributors to that. Okay, so wait a minute. How in the world does a bad relationship contribute to cardiovascular disease? Stress. Stress. That same review article mentioned stress contributes to physiological arousal, so increased heart rate and blood pressure. So let's unpack that a little bit more because stress is actually designed to benefit us. I don't know where you are right now, but what would you do if you turned around and you saw a big ass mammoth? You're gonna run. Now on the outside, it looks like we're just running, but on the inside, our blood pressure elevates because we have to push out more blood to our limbs and our heart rate increases because it has to cycle more blood. That entire process is known as acute stress. This is stress brought on by a one-time event that made your body act accordingly. The good news is we don't have to worry about running for our lives as much as we used to. Now we have more modern day stressors like work, money, and low quality relationships, or what we like to call those modern day stressors activate the same stressors that running from a woolly mammoth would activate. The only difference is once you get to safety, your blood levels go back to normal, normal blood pressure, normal heart rate. That isn't the case if we're talking about a low quality relationship. That stress is ongoing. We're talking about chronic stress. This review study mentioned high blood pressure from chronic stress is a result of repeated activation of the system, failure to return to normal levels after a stressful event, failure of getting used to similar stressors or a combination of them. So let's paint the picture. Running for our lives, all snap, I don't wanna die, blood pressure rises. We get to safety, cause we're fast as hell and we got away, now our blood pressure lowers. Stressful interactions with a bad relationship, it's the same response except we never run to safety. We either have that same interaction again or we ruminate on a bad interaction. That same article described rumination as a headspace characterized by repetitive, intrusive, and negative thoughts that could affect our ability to return to normal blood pressure levels. Just making sure I wasn't losing you. Got you? All right, here we go. They say you're the sum of the five people you hang around, but nowadays it's more like the one or two people because we be cutting mugs off. In order to get the full picture of the research that I do, I look at my hypothesis and then I look at the complete opposite. And the truth is often found somewhere in the middle. It isn't often that I come across studies with the gem of a title such as this one, but when I do, it's an automatic read. This study surveyed 315 people. The survey was composed of multiple tests that measured all kinds of stuff. Personality, well-being, narcissism, depression, bipolar tendencies, the whole nine. Actually, it was literally nine tests. Like, like they actually took nine tests. Like the whole nine. They got a full scope of these people and they compared what kind of person they were with the amount of estrangements they had. They defined estrangements as when someone is totally cut off from you and there is no plan to rekindle the relationship. They predicted that those with more estrangements would be those with more adverse social and emotional outcomes, and sure enough, they found a correlation, while also finding that those with 10 or more estrangements, god damn, demonstrated a psychological profile marked by emotional distress, social problems, and a dark approach to interacting with others. So what does this study tell us? That maybe we shouldn't walk around whipping out scissors like Inspector Gadget waiting to cut anybody off that inconveniences us even in the slightest. Go, go, Gadget scissors. Now I'm not in your shoes, quite frankly, because I wouldn't fit in your shoes, but I can throw some science at you that says social support can enhance our mental health and provide us with some guaranteed quality or your money back stress protection. So relationships have the ability to bring on stress. Stress is a killer. Stress got more bodies than Killmonger. But they also have the ability to completely buffer stress. So we have to be appreciative of the people that make life better. But if they're serving the opposite function,
They gotta go. I bought these just to be dramatic for that joke. That joke cost me $10.99. Give this joint a like if I threw some value at you and subscribe if you haven't. You can find me at No Lab Code Required on YouTube and Instagram and I'm gonna get about y'all later. the whole video with my lamp off? What did y'all tell me?